It is important to point out that with glycine, it has a neutral R group. So when determining the isoelectric point, we only looked at the carboxyl and the amine group. But what happens if we have an amino acid with an acidic or a basic R group? So if we have a look at glutamate or glutamic acid, we can see that it has four different structures, whereas glycine only had three. So the first thing that we need to do is look at each of our four structures and we need to determine which one has the neutral charge. So if we look at structure one, we can see that our amine group, which is plus one, we have the side group, which is neutral in charge, and the other carboxyl group is also protonated, which means both of them are neutral. Therefore, structure one has a total charge of plus one. Now structure two, our carboxyl group has been deprotonated, meaning that the overall charge is now neutral. Structure three, the carboxyl group has been deprotonated, meaning that the overall charge is now minus one. And finally, amine group has been deprotonated, meaning that we now have an overall charge of minus two. To determine the isoelectric point of glutamic acid, we need to determine at what pH will structure two be dominant. Now, I wish to be very clear here. Please do not take the average pKa of all four structures. Instead, what we want to do is we want to take the average of the two pKa values on either side of our neutral structure. We can see that the equilibrium, the pKa value, for structure one and structure two has a pKa of 2.19. So that tells us that at a pH of 2.19, 50% of our molecules is going to be in structure one and 50% of the molecules are gonna be in structure two. Now, if we have a look at structure two and structure three, it has a pKa value of 4.25. So what we need to do is take an average of those two pKa values. So we're going to take 2.19 plus 4.25 and divide it by two. And this will give us an isoelectric point of 3.22.